Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Shakespeare Backstage, which is the first expansion for the excellent, excellent Shakespeare, which I've already done a run through for, so if you want, you can go hit the eye in the top right corner to see a run through of how the base game works, because today, I'm not going to show you how this works. I'm just going to talk a little bit about what this new expansion adds to an already phenomenal game. So, what do you get in this little box of cards? Oh, so much goodness, let me tell you, folks. So, what do we got in here? We've got some rules. Yeah. Nothing particularly exciting, but they're they're good enough rules, straightforward. So we get nine new actors, I think, five new uh, objective cards, and a whole bunch. It's like thirty some backstage cards. These are the really cool thing, and they come with a extra theater card. We'll get that in a second. Let's save that for the end. First of all, let's talk about these new objectives. They're quite nice. Um, well, there's one that's normal. It's basically get points for having these assistants. Assistants were already really awesome. Now they're even more so if you pull this objective. You're really going to want to make sure you pick these guys up. So that's nice. The other four objectives are actually kind of new in the way that they function in that these are not going to give you victory points at the end of the game for achieving a goal. Instead, you can, if you get one of these, you can use them at the end of the round during the, uh, the morale phase or what's it called, the ambience phase. You can use these for their special power. Instantly increase your, um, your beginning, middle, and last act. That's a huge deal. That's three moves up. That's a big, gigantic thing. Um, this one, instantly grab some set uh, dressings or uh, costumes, which, you know, if there were some left over and you really, really wanted to snag some, that could come in handy. Grab some gold. Oh, yeah. If nobody else has a jeweler and there's left some gold left sitting there and you want it, you know how bad you want it, you can just snag it. And anytime you want, increase your ambience by three, which could put you up high enough to start scoring bonus points at the end of the round. So those are nice. And it's really kind of cool that they give you a different... I mean, when you pull one or two of these along with regular objectives, it's a tough choice. Grab the benefit right now or hope you pull off the in-game reward for achieving that goal. So these are very, very nice. And I really like how they aren't just repeats or, you know, more of the same. It's a fundamentally new way that the objective deck, when going to the queen to get objectives, can work. Oh, instead of giving her an objective, she just gives you a favor immediately. So those are cool. Next up, we've got these awesome new actors. They're all really, really neat. So we've got Mark Antony. And his special power is... He, uh, I guess this performer is so good, whenever he performs, you know, provided he's, you know, in full costume, of course, everybody else loses money. Because everybody here is in, in London about how great he is. People aren't coming to the other playhouses anymore. You start hemorrhaging money. So, and then we've got uh, Caliban here. Basically, uh, every other player drops one in the quality of the, you know, their first, second, or third act. And we've got Hermione. Oh, now, Hermione's interesting. There's a couple of things. Well, actually, the main thing going on for Hermione here. You will notice only two costume slots instead of three, like all the stuff in the regular game, only two. So she is much easier to get fully costumed. But what that means is instead of, you know, with a regular character, you get them fully costumed, you get a benefit, um, you know, depending on how good the costume is. And then during dress rehearsals, they can, if they're fully costumed, they can make use of that. In the case of these two space characters, I think there's a couple of them, you can fill this up much quicker. I mean, if you fill them up with high, with high quality costumes, you could still get that nice bonus. And once the costume is built, you immediately get this bonus. You don't have to wait until dress rehearsal near the end of the game. So you're your, what is the blue? Your third act immediately gets better as soon as Hermione gets into a really nice looking costume. Here's another one, uh, Mercutio, same basic idea. Uh, Ophelia, uh, this one's actually very, very cool. Activate her to get one of the plus threes so that your tradespeople can be more productive right out of the gate. Now, she's expensive, as you might imagine, because that's a really awesome power, but it's a really awesome power. Now, we've got Shylock over here, another one of the double. Oh, the ghost. So, the ghost is just spooky, I guess. Every time you activate him, other players' plays drop. I mean, I guess the, uh, you know, they're just not written as well as one would have hoped. And, more importantly, for dress rehearsal, when he's fully outfitted, get another objective. Coming late in the game, that might be a bit of a gamble. Although, now that these things are in here, it's less of a gamble because these are always, almost always going to be useful at any time. So, the ghost power. Then you've got Richard III. Oh, this is probably my favorite one. Um, so, this is another double. And his power, every time you use him, um, you know, is so well written. He is such an incredible, memorable character. Your first, second, and third act all improve every time he rehearses. But, 
Um, the problem is, of course, you also drop. I mean, it, it, it's an incredible performance, but it's such a hideous performance that the morale of your entire troop drops every time you use him. But if you put him in a really nice costume, that effect goes away. So you just got to dress this guy up pretty before you start having him perform. And then, okay, now this is the coolest one. The bear. Um, cost three. Uh, you know, increases your play by one if he's fully, if, he, if it's a really nice bear costume as opposed to a, a, a crappy bear costume, I guess. The special power here is though, you don't have to actually put a, a disc to activate this guy. Whoever has the bear, no matter how people bid in the opening action auction, no matter how they bid, whoever has the bear always goes first. And that is a major, major game changer. So that's the bear. Okay. So those are all cool. Those objectives, those uh, actors, all very, very neat. But that all kind of pales in comparison to the backstage. How does the backstage work? Okay, well, you've got a whole bunch of characters. I think there's like three of each one. There's two, three, or four of each one. I forget. I haven't actually counted them up. But, you know, you, you shuffle them up at the beginning of the game. And uh, as, you know, part of the setup for every round, when, uh, you know, a certain number of actors come out based on how many players, say if you're playing a two-player game, you know, four actors are going to come out. In addition to four actors coming out, four backstage characters come out as well. And of course, with more players, there'd be more backstage the same way there's more actors. Now, here's the way this works. Oh, I should have grabbed some discs. Let me grab some discs. Oh, where are you? I'm totally prepared, folks. Not even remotely. All right, so, hey, I'm the green player, and I've got my discs. And of course, you know, uh, playing Sh Shakespeare, the first thing you do every round is you got to decide, am I going to go try and do four actions this round, which means I waste one action. Um, but that means four people are tired out. So next turn, um, you know, there won't be much I can do. Or do I go for, but, you know, because the more I do, the, you know, the, the more actions I do, I'm more likely to go first, but I tire everybody out. And whoever does the least actions, of course, gets a point. And in this game, every point you get is huge. Huge. That's gigantic. And so, you know, it's always an interesting notion of, am I going to bid three? Am I going to bid two? But often, we have found with the base game, it tends, people tend to go with three or two. And so a lot of the times, we have found the tie is broken by the initiative track, which is important as well. But with backstage, things get much more interesting because what happens is, let's say, you know, on a given turn, you know, there's all the backstage cards come out. Here's all the actors that have come out every turn. And let's say I go on ahead and I say, you know, I'm going to do three actions. And I reveal maybe I'm first, maybe I'm not, whatever. I've got three actions I'm going to do this turn. In the base game, these just get put off to the side. They don't get used. That's the lost opportunity. But with backstage, they come over here and everybody puts them on the backstage. Let's say Jen did three, I did two. These are now additional discs. We get to use all five of our discs every round, no matter what. And but it's still turn-based. And you know, so my first turn, I might use an action because I really want to get initiative, or I might, you know, get uh, Ophelia because I really, really want Ophelia really bad. As an example, because who am I? I'm the green player, so I'm, I'm, I might value that more than anything else. But that means I'm maybe giving Jen first dibs on backstage stuff, which we can use our unused discs for. And every backstage character, they do all really, really cool things. They're not as powerful as, the, as your actual actors, your actual trades people. They're like less powerful versions, but these can be a really big game changer. For instance, okay, well, I, I wanted Ophelia so bad, I decided to go for that first. That meant I gave Jen first dibs on the backstage. So if there happened to be some gold items out, even though Jen doesn't have a jeweler, she could spend two of her unused discs to activate the jeweler and get some costumes or set golden set dressings. That's really deal because once Jen does that, it's gone. Okay, Jen's taking that. I can't do that anymore. And maybe I wanted that point from that gold set dressing even more than I wanted that. Um, let's see, what else might Jen do if she's first over here? Well, she might come over here. Oh, I forget what this guy is. The He's like the stage manager or something like that. Depending on the number of discs you want to use, if Jen uses one disc, she could grab a lowly level gray uh, set piece, you know, from the dis from the display, and install it over here on her own private stage. And what happens is the first one you put in goes on the bottom. You score a point for that, and you get to do whatever it is. Uh, you know, gray ones don't do anything, but of course, you know, if you if you get the blue one, which requires two discs, that increases your ambiance by two, uh, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
But, so, yo, know, Jen might, co might come over here to use this guy and grab one of the blues, put it here, get a victory point, and get a, uh, you know, get ambience. Now, here's the thing. Several of these guys are going to come out over the game. If another one comes out in a later turn, you could use him again and put a second thing here. Now, you won't get a point for the second, but both the first and the second one will be activated. So, ultimately, if you go visit this guy, there must be four of them in. There must be four of each in the deck. If you visit him all four times, you could activate this, whatever you put here, four times, three times, two times, and one time, and get two points. These could be incredibly powerful. And if Jen wanted, if there were a green set piece out, she could put all three out. But maybe she doesn't care about that. Instead, maybe she wants to visit um, Kit Marlowe. Uh, not by name, not really joke around. Uh, a single one, which means then maybe Jen could use her other two over here to on, on a future turn if I don't snag it. Because you know maybe Jen wants this really bad uh, because she figures, well, I've only got two. I won't go for one over there. I'd probably want to go for three. If you use all three of your backs, if you have three backstage discs on Kit Marlowe, all your action creeps by one instead of just a single disc means one of them. So maybe Jen comes over here for the jeweler. And then later on, hey, I've got two, and I go on ahead and start building backstage. And then Jen visits Kit. And she gets to increase one of her acts by one. Let's see. Oh, this one. This is the line reader. He's a special one. Um, if you take him and it only requires one. Most of these backstage, you use them once and then they're removed from the game. This guy, though, gets recruited like any tradesperson. You use one to recruit him. His special power is when you're dur during dress rehearsal, when you might lose points for not having your axe out of, you know, getting up to the middle, you know, because you lose points if your axe are down low. Um, with the line reader, you can actually spend money to avoid losing one, two, or all three of those negative effects by spending one, two, or three bucks. So he could be really handy too. So maybe Jen would then go ahead and snag him because Jen's not going for a game where she's going to get her play really well done. She's instead going for costumes and props or whatever. Or she might go for Kit instead. And so the extra thinking that has to go in because... You know, uh, I, I opted not to have any of these, even though I had two here because I wanted that. But maybe I wanted, um, you know, maybe I want the gold really bad. And then suddenly Jen's plans go awry. Who knows? There are so many cool characters here. Um, the, the Ragman, his special power is he lets one of your regular trades people go to the discard pile. Um, you know, uh, set pieces and clothing that has been discarded can be gotten out with the Ragman. Oh, the Hatter. She might be my favorite. Because, you know, normally you are putting... Um, man, where are they? Is this the... I should have had all my pieces out first. You know how you're playing the game and I've got an actor. Let's have a normal actor. Uh, you know, I've got this extra. And hey, I'm putting clothes on, I'm putting outfits on him, and oh yeah, this is gonna be really, really great. Um, you know, one more, he's gonna be up high enough to score me a lot of points when I complete his outfit. If I activate the hatter who requires one disc, one backstage disc to put one hat on, or three to put on two, what I can do is I take one of the clothing that's still on the display, and I put it in the leftmost space of one of my characters. It's an extra bit of clothing. And in this case, say there happened to be a two that was still available, and then, where'd she go? I activated the hatter. She's disappeared. Oh, I'm so scared. Oh, yeah. I activate the hatter. I take one of the ones from the display, I put it, I put it in the leftmost. And if the the chip that's already there and the one I just placed total six, that's a point because I've given the perfect hat. Uh, it's just fun to tally up uh, you know, all your hats as extra points at the end of the game. See, here's another one of the stage managers. Oh no, this is the stage, no, this is the director. If you activate him with a single disc, he means one of the people you visited, the queen, your actors, your craftspeople, whatnot, one additional one does not get tired. So you have an even bigger next turn. Here's Kit again. Ah, oh, the local tavern. Spend one or three to increase your ambience by one or three. Um, the, uh, this is the stage double. This guy lets you activate a, an actor a second time. So you can get two uses out of them in one round. A uh, traveling merchant lets you go on ahead Head and you know, depending on how many discs you spend, grab clothing that you wouldn't normally be able to grab. Um, oh, oh, the the Lord. As part of setup, when you're playing with the expansion, nine random actors are put off to the side in a stack, and they can't be gotten normally. But if you visit the uh, the Lord Chamberlain here. Not only will you be able to recruit one actor like normal every round, but visiting the Lord Chamber lets you get a second actor in a round by going to the Lord's deck, the 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 actor the deck of really. Uh, prestigious actors. So that's really cool, getting two actors in one round. Uh, let's see, uh, you know, and again, um, building your own private stage, uh, the jeweler, 
See, have I mentioned all of them now? I think I have. Yep. And so, every round, when a bunch of new backstage characters come out, it becomes a much, 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 much bigger decision to decide how many um, actions are going to get sent backstage versus not. Because, you know, maybe you want to send... F I mean, I, this has never happened in the regular game, Jen. I have never actually been so desperate that um, we've actually only done one action on the stage and passed with four. But now with backstage, you would actually do that if you think you have a shot at actually activating several things, as an example. That could be ginormous. But if a lot of players go there, these things get gobbled up just as fast as the really nice set pieces in costumes get gobbled up too. So that's it, folks. That is what Shakespeare backstage offers. And I got to admit, I mean, for final thoughts, going in, I was a little bit nervous about this because, well, I like the new objectives. I'd read about the actors. I liked all the new powers, but I was really worried about the backstage thing because base Shakespeare is so good. It's already such a wonderful tightrope of a decision-making process every round when you have to decide how many discs you are going to sacrifice to get first place, to get first player. That's a tough, tough choice every round. Um, but now, you're not really sacrificing them. Any ones you don't use, well, they just go backstage and you'll still get to use them. I was afraid that would make, that would take away from the challenge of the decision. And it would make the game a little bit simpler, a little bit easier even, but it doesn't. If anything, I was really surprised, it makes the game deeper and more complex because, like I said, there will be times when I might actually sacrifice four even all five guys not use any of my actors just so I could do more backstage stuff. But I have to gauge my opponent. How bad do they want that backstage stuff? Because everybody's revealing at the same time. If I go too heavy into backstage, I might not get the stuff I wanted. So it just becomes a deeper, a tougher choice to make. And I love it. Jedi, we absolutely adore it. I don't know that we would play without backstage anymore because it makes the game so much richer. I do have one complaint, though, about this. Uh, it didn't turn out that backstage made it easier. Like I said, if anything, it makes the game deeper, richer, um, more thought-provoking. And that can be a problem because it makes the decision at the beginning of every round that much tougher. Um, I mean, it, it definitely, you have significantly more stuff now to consider and try to figure out what your opponent might go for backstage. Do you think you have a shot at getting what you want? Will you sacrifice that really important actor, that really important set piece to get backstage? How many things will you send backstage versus front stage? The game ends up being... A, even though we do the same number of actions, well, no, actually, that's not true. In the regular game, you don't do five actions every round because you sacrifice some. In this game, you have the potential to do five actions every round. So the game gets deeper and richer and more thought-provoking and longer. Uh, the game is definitely, I mean, the, you know, the base game, 20 to 90 minutes. I mean, for me and Jen, we could finish a game of Shakespeare in about an hour. Not anymore. This has definitely pushed it closer up to an hour and a half. And, I mean... I like shorter games, but that's really my only complaint. It's pretty minor because the game is so much cooler and so much richer. I think we are ready. We find it a reasonable trade-off to take on that extra length to get that extra depth and fun factor that Backstage offers. And that's it, folks. That's Shakespeare Backstage. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, always please let me know. Otherwise, I uh, hope you have a very, very nice day. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. So long. Adieu. Bye-bye.